Welcome to our anniversary series, guys. We're gonna pretty much telling you guys what these lyrics mean to us. I used to be in the streets. I went from having my baby sleep in a cardboard box to being able to provide mm -hmm. every child of mine a room. That was a really hard story for me to open up about with you guys because I know that there will be a lot of judgment towards me. Don't let them lie to you. Black is beautiful. They wanna take your soul. you guys doing today welcome back to the channel guys y'all already know today, today is going is down in the major, major way. way if you haven't already make sure you like comment and subscribe oh yeah and turn on post notification bells <laughs> to join the fastest growing family on youtube comment down below early gang 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 if you guys are a part of our early game post notification squad. Ooh, you think boys is good. Yeah, they getting groomed very well, huh? Yeah, so tell them what we're doing today, babe. Well, today, right now, we got to get babe's eyebrows threaded. Are right you sure now, that's what you call them? Yes, they need threaded. No, 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 no. Are you whatever. sure you didn't call them bushwhackers? <laughs> no, them things look like Rovering eyebrows. She look like Rovering guys. Rover ring. <laughs> guys, my eyebrows are going through some things. So guys, we gotta tap in on this beauty with wifey real quick. So we'll see you guys when she get back out. Okay guys, so I'm all done. I have had my eyebrows completely done. And I don't know if you guys can notice, but I also had my lashes done as well. Not like the fake ones, but what I had done was a lash lift. So it pretty much takes your natural lash and it just kind of like lifts it up and makes it look natural. Can you tell? Yeah, I can tell. I see it. Do it look better? It looks yeah, natural it looks better, like yeah. without even any mascara, right? It looks better. Isn't that cool? It's like your eyes are red though around you. Man, they're red a little bit, guys. I'm a little bit sensitive. My eyebrows have tamed down, but I just got finished getting my eye um, eyelashes unglued, so yeah it was nice i haven't done anything usually i put makeup in my eyebrows but honestly i'm okay with this look even but yeah now we're about to finish the rest of our day i'm super hungry so i hope we're gonna grab something to eat at least just some mm. <laughs> so what is katie eating babe you know what i don't even know butternut squash katie's Ooh. eating butternut squash look at katie oh boy he's making a, a mess eater. he loves it too you're making a mess buddy Ooh. Eat, 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 eat. Ooh, he loves it. He loves to eat, guys. And he you does so some good. more coffee? You talk acidic. It's gonna come through your skin. <laughs> Babe, I'm getting yeah. too old for it to come through my skin anymore. Yeah, it will. Ready? Sad. Ooh. Oh, come on. There you go. Well, you so excited. She, well, you can't even get it. <laughs> wow. Kevin, how do that feel, buddy? Huh? How do that feel? Hmm? I think he loves it, Freddie. What? Oh. Oh. Ooh. He like moves so much. He move a lot, dude. Oh, don't look at me like that. Like I did something. But he loves to eat. I mean, he's doing amazing. Well, it's Kata's eat time, I guess. What is called, babe? Feeding. We're trying to feed him as best as we can. And, um, yes, to make sure he gets big and strong. Yes. And eat all, everything he can, and just keep crawling and keep walking and everything getting so strong. he can get strong. And do his one, too, because his name is Caden Lynn Hall. Look at him. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> driveway. So do you don't think you'll need anything more powerful than the 2000 or the 3000? That'll be uh -huh. one of these guys. So guys, I'm trying to get this pressure washer for the house. And guys, it's going to be a, a smooth process, I believe. A smooth process. Let's 
get into it, babe. Let's get into this right now. It's already juicy. And this is episode one. Welcome to our anniversary series, guys. This is, they said we were set up to, to fail, fail, but, but we, we didn't. didn't. Woo, I love that. Let's get that. into it, yeah. So those words are so powerful. Very and powerful. Those words mean so much to us. Just a little bit of a background of Marco and I's story. We were always kind of counted out. I know a lot of you guys have just joined along our journey um, kind of at like a fruitful stage in our life mm -hmm. where we're finally starting to see the fruit of what we've been putting in watering seeds and planting seeds for many, many years. Yes. And you guys have kind of just got to the fruitful stage. So a lot of you guys aren't really too familiar with our background and with exactly. our story. And yeah. we've shared it with you, like a little bit of tidbits. A little bit, yeah. Here and there. But today, because we are going to be dropping our first ever music video. Music video is come dropping August 8th, guys. At midnight. midnight. On Midnight, our anniversary. On our anniversary. So this Sunday, guys, set your clocks and calendars. Turn on the post notifications because you guys don't want to miss. You don't want to miss the music world video. premiere, guys. Yeah. This is the world premiere. Yes. So we're going to pretty much just be telling you guys what these lyrics mean to us and why we chose them for this song and why they're so powerful and why they give so much yes. life and why they brought fruitfulness to our life just by speaking these words into our life. So they said we were set up to fail, but we didn't, guys. Yes. We were and the we underdog. Didn't. And, and we were the underdogs most definitely where we from yes we were the underdogs most definitely where we from because of the city we from guys and, and it's not a it's not a lavish city it's not a no it's you not know, like a it's Vegas a, Yes, it's, it's not, not fancy. It, and it, it got a lot to do with who you surround yourself with, but mm -hmm. it's almost like you had no choice but to surround yourself with those type of people because those really That's was the most, only mostly only those the type of people that was around. Yes, so Mark and I noticed that we were different when we started trying to affiliate with the best quality of people that we could from the area exactly. that we were from. For instance, exactly. I tried to get heavily involved in church and I got heavily involved with mm -hmm. ministry and uh, uh, the what do you call it on the stage where you sing with the people babe like yes. the church choir band um, Marco always looked up to coaches yes football coaches and, and teachers. teachers and stuff like that people that were just an example of mm -hmm. positivity and endurance in our life yeah. just to be completely honest with you where we come from is a very 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 small city yes, everyone has small. a lot of love for each other but everyone is very in everyone's business and there's a lot of crime that goes on in our city That's a lot of crime. and I don't want to say that I condone crime but there's really no way people feel like there's no way for them to really survive if they don't go to crime to do yes. it so there's a lot of like stealing from other people a lot of stuff man. a lot of really negative yes, things go on in things. the city that we're from yes. so on top of that Marco and I got our first child at very early ages Marco was 15 years old whenever yes, he had 15. his first child yep. I was 15 years old when I got pregnant with my first child so now we're already birthed into this city of destruction. We was already set up to fail, basically. We were pretty much set, set up, up to, to fail, fail from right the there. beginning, like. We set up to fail, and guys, those are choices that we, you know, made on our own. We yes. don't blame nobody because those are the choices that we made. We take full responsibility of our choices, our choices that we made. But I know that those situations right there, you automatically set up to fail because what's a future to a 15 year old having a kid? Yeah, and it wasn't just us that were set up to fail. Our mothers were set up to fail. Our, our grandparents were set up to fail. Even the children that we had was set up to fail. It took, like, Marco's mom is, I believe, a first-generation Christian, right? Yes. My mother is a first-generation Christian, but then also got my grandmother to be a Christian. Not that that, we don't really want to go there, but what we do want to say is that I feel like that played a big part in us being able to be the crabs out of the bucket because yes. it happens with generations and yes. generations. You never notice why your life is the way it is until you look and reflect upon mm -hmm. what you were born into, what your grandparents were born into, what kind of conditions and trauma you've had as a child. Some people aren't. Some people yes. aren't born into that at all. So that's and, why and we say we were set, set up, up to, to fail. fail. Just a little bit of history on me. Yeah, I used to be in the streets. Like I used to be in the streets. I used to be with the, that's you know, I used to be to out do. there guys. I used to be out there strong. I used to be, you know, doing bad things myself plenty of bad things I used to be in bed in the streets I changed my life completely when I had got robbed at 
point before. I was in a whole completely different city, guys. It was crazy. It's a bad experience. I, I want to talk about it, which I am. You know, when that situation, I hope none of that situation ever happened to you guys, but that situation happened to me, and my life flashed before my eyes. Everything that I did, everything that I said, everything just went so fast, like shoo, shoo, three guys having pointed to you, you know, pointed at your head, telling you to, and then the other one's telling them to, to, to get me out of here, stuff like that, and I'm looking dead at the dude in his eyes while he got the pointed to my head. Begging for his life. You know, saying, man, you don't gotta do this, you don't gotta do this, just take it, whatever, 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 you know, just take, take it, just take it, just take it, don't take my life, just take it, you know, I feel like God gave me a, a second chance on that, and after that, guys, I changed my life, because, and I knew I had so much going for myself, I had a family at home, I had, you know, my mom, sister, brother, cousins, and all type of stuff, my daughter, everything, it was just too much, and so, unfortunately, after that, I changed my life, but in your family like yes and then my family is generational of, 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 of family members getting and murdered I was headed down that path if I didn't change my life and go and detour and go the other way and pursue my boxing career and go full-fledged on that and stop being around the people I was being around, hanging around the people I was hanging around. That's what we mean by we were set up to fail, but we did it. Yeah, same exact situation from Marco, but unfortunately on my side of the family there was a lot of as well. I was headed down the path of being by I don't even want to say who, but I just want to say that if I would have stuck in the conditions that I was in, I probably would have ended up dead on multiple occasions for multiple different reasons. Just because of the people that I associated with and the crowds that I was hanging around, I was around the literally the worst people you could possibly ever be around that you wouldn't ever want to be around, ever, because their mentality is just, and it's proven by the things that have came out in the future about these people now and what they've done to other people. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm just saying by, I don't want to say anything or throw anyone under the bus because I know everyone has their reasonings for doing things and I know that people do things based off of how they've been raised and what they're accustomed to. And I know that I was in that path, but I decided to choose differently for my life and for my family and I believe the best of my life and of my family and whenever I kind of just stopped accepting those kind of behaviors in my life that's when all the good started to happen yeah that's great babe I'm I've, glad. I know that I've shared on TikTok this week about how I went from having my baby sleep in a cardboard box with a pillow to being able to provide every child in my mm -hmm. every child of mine a room in my home now and that was a really hard story for me to open up about with you guys because I know that there will be a lot of judgment towards me just because like what kind of mother does that to their child but I'll be honest with you as soon as I knew I was pregnant with Braylon I always wanted the absolute best for him I always felt very bad for him because I chose to have him at such a young age and I always wanted him to have the best so that's all I knew how to do really was take care of him and make him as comfortable as I could um, and I just did that and then eventually, you know, he wasn't in a cardboard box for long, I'll be honest with you. Like, I was probably in that situation for a good six months before I finally ended up getting my own apartment and Braylon had his own room and things like that. But I had to work for those, like, that's whenever I was at that call center and I met okay. your brother. Yeah. And then I went to West and, like, I've worked from the ground up and everything. I started at minimum wage. Like, a lot of you guys, that's why we're sharing this, because you guys see us now, yeah. but you don't really realize, like, it took me 15 interviews before I finally got hired for one job. Like, I couldn't even get hired into a job, and then finally when I did, I was making minimum wage. And they were pretty racist at the place that I was working, so they wouldn't even let me be a front hostess girl because the owner of the building didn't like African-American women to work the front to see all of his important guests, so I actually had to just be a server assistant and bust the tables with the men because he just didn't like women of color. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that that was my first job guys and when Marco and I pretty much got pregnant Crazy, man. it made like, our lives even more hard yes guys it was it was hard like most definitely like when you ain't with the person it's like even more harder like the whole situation gets even more hard most definitely on the man's end to be honest the women they the young they the young women they don't want you know if you can if you're not with them they're not gonna be let you see the kid or it's not like in know, other communities like where people are functional like yes. you're talking about 
people who have been raised in dysfunction for years so they just people don't want you if you don't want them and you yeah. can't be a part of your child's life if you're not with them yes. and instead of it being like mutual where there are people that can say okay maybe we're gonna be a blended family but it's okay you can still see your father you can still mm -hmm. see your mother not where we come from yeah. like people are very and it ain't like you know my daughter would have been in any danger or any situation like that because I would have never and I never had my daughter in any dangerous situations period no dangerous homes or none of that <laughs> danger you know none of that everything was great my way it's just when you ain't with a person it's just like they keep the kid away from you imagine being 15 years old 15, already being thrown yes. into the system being the held system. away from your firstborn child their entire life yes. practically until they turned 18 like yes your mind is everywhere like I can just everywhere. about imagine how yes you my mind was up. everywhere I feel out of place and so out of place even with my peers in high school and and you know I just feel so out of place I feel like the eyeball in every situation like every, other people's conversations was different than mine because I had a child at 15 most conversations were completely different because they they didn't have no kid and I'm the only one with a kid that's 15 going on 16 with a child in the ninth grade some just dawned on me though and God is so good he did that to you on purpose. And I don't want to say he did that to you on purpose. Like, oh, ew. <laughs> like it's okay. But I feel like God was preparing you to have small conversations with people because he already knew that where you were going, you weren't going to be able to relate to everyone. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. know why that just connected with me right now. Yeah. But I feel so deeply that the reason why God allowed us to be such a minority group of people is because mm -hmm. he already knew where we were going. A lot of people weren't going to be there. And even though it was a hard situation and it was something that most people wouldn't yeah, be able was, to endure. It was very hard, babe. God knew that in our future, it was going to be the same exact way. There's going to be a lot of people, but very few that want to endure what you have to do. Exactly. And so that's so crazy that that just like hit me like lightning while you were talking about it. Well, good. That's really cool though, because it's just crazy how everything in life comes around full circle. I was and in the streets yes, really bad. Yes, Brooke was in the streets too, guys. I was in the streets. It, it was crazy. Like the stories that we tell each other and that we just remind each other like how far we came. It's just so much, guys. It honestly feels like we're living two different lives yes like it it feels so far from reality now yeah. where we come from that it feels like a totally different life yes right? and it feel like just so am I really that person that was there you know and that that's how it feel it feel like are we really in the same skin and the same body and we was in that situation is like unbelievable it, it's just so mind-blowing yes. and that's and, that, and the, the reason why we're telling you guys we bring you guys closer to us to to know us more and plus we want the beverly hall family to know who we are as a whole as a whole family guys because this story is not just about us it's about shedding light to help you guys not make those same moves or same decisions to be a better you. I don't know about you, but I feel like it's been placed so heavily on my spirit this week to just open back up about my life and to open back up and not to shy away from the things that I've been through because we're living in a generation where it's so imperative that the people with the wisdom of older years seriously need to start devout, like pushing that wisdom into the younger generations because there's not enough people doing that, sadly. Yes. So anything that I've went through, I just had this revelation this week that it's just not, nothing to be ashamed of. Like, I'm not ashamed of anything that I've been through. And I'm not ashamed, be ashamed of ashamed. anywhere Everybody I've been. Everybody go through things, babe. And I just want, like Marco said, for you guys to be able to just relate and know that even if you're in those rough times right now, even if you're in or around the scummiest people, because if you look around and you really ask yourself these questions, it's okay. There are baby steps to making it a different way for yourself. You just have to believe. And you have to take those certain steps to make those situations better for your life. Like yeah. you're talking about a decade or two it's taken us yes. to get this far away it from that. Been, it could have been sooner if we would have listened to faster. a certain thing. Yeah, if we would have listened faster, but you know, ain't no time like right now. I'm getting it done right now. We're pretty much in this series giving you what we would have told our younger self. Yes, exactly. But be careful. Whatever yes. you're in, please be careful. Yes, of course. Be careful, guys, on just being around people that ain't good for you. That's just what we're saying and, and what we want to shed light on, guys. Just to let you guys know that this music video that we are dropping means so much Hope. more. 
it, it, it means so much to us, guys. It's not just we dropping a music video or because we, we want to do music because yeah, we're TikTokers. No, you know? no, we dropping music just because we trying to tell you guys story. our story. Like we telling you guys our story, and this music video means so much. Yeah, so much, guys. Stay tuned for episode two, dropping with you guys, leading all the way up to the music video, the world premiere, midnight, August 8th, guys. Stay tuned. Yes. Beverly Hall family, we love you. Love you. Peace. See you on the next one. Peace. I gotta come back and marry you. Okay, say no more.